Hey, good day, folks. It's uh, Lance Klesig with Soil Keepers. I'm here today with uh, Clifford Johnson, who farms uh, Johnson Family Farms outside of Painesville, Minnesota. Cliff, first off, can you tell us a little bit about some of the crops you grow, um, some of the things you've been playing around with here on, the, on your farm? Well, we're an organic farm that yeah. uh, runs a couple thousand acres, and we got uh, row crops, corn, soybeans, uh, um, oats, rye. Uh, we're doing full season cover crops on certain farms and we're running cattle, we're grazing and uh, this last year we got it over a quarter of our farm animals on. Awesome. And so, Yeah, and you guys have been doing uh, no tilling your soybeans into standing rock for the last four or five years? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we've, we really like our annual no-till soybeans. <laughs> yep, that's right, <laughs> annual no-till soybeans. Uh, it's really been work, working out well, and sure. we've this was our fourth year, and we will definitely continue Sweet. that aspect of it. Sweet. And we've uh, been working on some 60-inch corn, mm -hmm. and we were happy with what we the results we saw there, and we got um, we're definitely going to expand on that for next year. Sure. And new things we're trying and doing, and it's encouraging. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Cliff and I just came off a. Of we had an afternoon meeting yesterday where we talked about a lot of your ideas, also how 2019 fared for you, and I think it was, you know, there was definitely some challenges, but it was also pretty exciting to look ahead to, to 2020. So, um, one thing that I just think it's worth saying is that Cliff and his, his dad Olaf, uh, brother Jake, you know, they're really farm, farming uh, with the perspective of uh, net profit per acre in return on investment. You guys aren't worried about yield. You know, Cliff mentioned, yeah, we're organic, and yet, uh, you know, cash flowing and making having a positive cash flow at the end of the year on every acre is really the, the main goal. And I think you guys do an awesome job of that. So, um, so we're here to talk a little bit about compost and compost teas. Tell us a little bit about, you have some significant history uh, with composting. Tell us a little bit, you built a turner. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we got, you know, we got most of our information from Elaine Ingham and, you know, went through all her classes and got educated on soil biology and how it works. Yeah. And we built uh, first a pole type turner and then we ended up building a self-propelled turner out of Alexan combine and now uh, doing windrow situation with the the pole type turner and the self-propelled turner now we're doing Johnson Sioux uh, bio compost turners yeah. in the bins here and right. which this is a longer process but it's way less labor sure sure and tell us a little bit about this is the, the first year or second year you've done this? Well, or when we're, I mean, this last year was the first year we used the product. Sure. So, but yeah, well, we're going into our second year here. But you know, that's that's the worst part. It takes a year right. for this process to happen. So you can get real excited about it. Right. But if you year. start it, you got to wait a year. So, sure. you know, that's where... Um, the five bins that I did, we only used two of them, and they lasted long enough, so now we're not going to build any till next spring. Sure, so. sure. That makes sense. So tell us a little bit the process. So what did you put in here? Was it straw? Was it leaves? Was it old hay? We basically use mainly our bedding pack manure, but we mix some extra straw with it, corn straw and stuff, and basically I put it in our manure spreader, and okay. so it mixed it up and spread it out, and then we hydrated it with water sure and then we hand forked it out of the skid loader bucket into the bins you know right. so we could get it dispersed in there properly and sure and heated it up yeah and then heat it up and go through the heat process and you know it was approximately month month and a half later we got back down to 80 degrees and then we got worms and you know I put about 2,000 worms into each, each one. bin sure so yeah, and you guys, you guys built these. They're just on a pallet with some hog panel or whatever. Or uh... yeah, we basically expanded metal. You know, we built all the framework. We built them so they can stack on top of each other because we keep them in our our shop all year. Heated and, shop. Yeah, and it's heated, so that way they're functioning all year. And it's something you know we're in it pretty much every day, so it's something we can walk, you know, manage and sure. water and you know keep track of. So yeah, you know, when it's right in front of you, you can. Baby, you know, right. baby it. So yeah, and that's what you want when right. you're doing something new yep. and yeah, managing it. Yeah. Because this is mainly for our extracts that we're doing in furrow with the seed at planting. That's kind of our main thing, and then we are using some of it for um, fuller feeding on 
on some of the crops. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. So you did it mostly on, on every one of your so corn and soybean acres? Or yeah, most, most of, of the corn and soybeans got, got all of it this last year. Okay, and you've been happy with what you saw so it, far? Yeah, or? the product, I mean, as far as the product blending off and putting it on, um, things went well there. You know, the equipment handled it nice. It went in the furrow nice. Um, this last year was a huge struggle for us with the weather, you know, so, right. you know, it's, I didn't see any major results, but, sure. you know, we're in the soil building process and we are seeing improvements and we are seeing things happen. And, yeah. and so this is just one of the tools that we're using to get our biodiversity up in our soils and sure. get things functioning and working, you know, because yeah. we're in a low input operation and, right. you know, we're trying to run strictly on soil biology. So right. that's what we're trying to fix and yeah. and uh, treat properly. Right, and I think Cliff hits it right on the head, you know, so they're not, as an organic farm, they don't have the synthetic fertilizers and the sprays and other tools that other growers have. So really focusing on, on carbon and having a live root 24 seven and cycling that, the nutrients and, and getting water in the soil profiles, so infiltrating water, those are really big, you know, objectives that you guys have that right. we talk about on every crop, each rotation, all that type of thing. And then, you know, like you said, getting across 500 some acres of, of ground with your cows and grazing it and the, the dung and the urine, but also the, the hair and the saliva. I mean, that's all adding biology to the system. And that's, that's really important as we want to farm holistically and regeneratively, you know, yeah. I mean, I think that's really important. So, 